Good morning, darlings. Good morning. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm going to let Facebook gather my audience. Mm. Wake up, darlings. Okay, I see you guys starting to come in. Come on in here, y'all. I gotta I tell you something right quick. I tell you something right quick. Good morning. Good morning to you too. Some of y'all, y'all ain't gonna know about this old school Al Jarreau. I ain't an old school head. Uh, I don't really I don't really listen to today's music. I take it all the way back to the to the Lionel Richie, to the Al Jarreaux, yeah no, to the Jeffrey Osborne's. Uh, that that's me. Come on in here. Hey, hey, Joe, what's going on, Shawty? How y'all doing? How you doing? Hey, Nikki, how y'all doing? All right, let me get right into it. Uh, have, hope everybody's having a wonderful morning. I hope you got up and you did something amazing. Um, and that one amazing thing I hope you did is be thankful and grateful that you actually woke up, okay? Because if you're not thankful and grateful that you woke up, you know, somebody would like to be in your place. You know, somebody would love to be in your place, okay? Listen, I was I was getting dressed this morning. I'm getting 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 my day started, you know. Your girl had to do her hair and her makeup and everything like that. And as I was sitting there um, flat ironing my hair, um, I had a thought. And tell me what you think. I was thinking about fear and why so many people are afraid. Uh... I, for those of you that are new to me, my name is April Mason and I am a life redesign and business strategist. So I help you redesign your life by redesigning, helping you redesign the way you think. So as I'm sitting there and getting ready to get my day started, I'm flat ironing my hair and um, I have the thought about fear. Why so many people are so fearful? I get a ton of messages from people from all across the world. Doesn't matter if they're in Europe, it doesn't matter if they're in South Africa, it doesn't matter if they're in the United States. The... Um, question or the thought process is still the same and it's all about fear and so for those of you that don't know I started my first business with $50 from a welfare check homeless with three kids when I was 23 years old and I was fearful a little bit and I um you know was one of those people that was pretty much living my life based upon how what I was taught. And I know some of you say, I fear no one and nothing but God. But if that were the case, so many people would be so much further than they are. If you only fear God, honestly, if you if you're if you're broke, you're fearful. And if there's a reason for that behind that. If you're not in a if you refuse to go out and date again and get in and open yourself up to love again, it's because you're fearful. So I know that sounds good. I don't fear nobody but God. And all. that's that's wonderful. But results, I told you guys, results don't lie. So as I'm doing my hair and I'm thinking, I said, you know, the reason why most people are fearful, here's the number one reason. It's what you're watching on television, what you're listening to on the radio. And this is why I say that. Media promotes fear. It keeps us in a perpetual state of fear. So my ladies that are saying, April, you know, I would really love to meet a really great man, but I'm scared because, you know, these men out here, they be this, you know, you got the down low brothers, then you got the ones that's this. And then the statistics tell us, the numbers say that we have to, all of this stuff, right? So the media and what they're feeding you is keeping you single. I know I, I was a part of that too. I was a part of that too. So we see the divorce rates, right? We see bad relationships on television. Show me one television show. Like, like, matter of fact, give me 10, 10 good television shows out of all of the television shows that are on television right now, including reality TV. Give me 10 that has successful families, marriages, you know, show me that. And because we, whatever you put in and, and you, you get more of, that's what you become. So we're seeing so many housewives show, but ain't nobody no freaking housewife. So it's making you believe that that's okay. Even though 
subconsciously, you really want to be with somebody, right? But based upon what you see, because you're not aware of what's going on in that sub subconscious mind of yours, you are liking posts. Like, all right, here, take this out. I watch every now and again, I'll log on and I'll scroll through my, uh, my timeline, right? And I'll see people that write stuff like, um, your education, your job, and your money can't get up and leave you like a man can. And I'll see thousands of women saying, I know that's right. I know that's right. Or you'll get stuff like, uh, girl, you more than you deserve more than that. And, uh, you, you know, you should go get you somebody that can do X, Y, and Z for you. And these women are saying, yeah, 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 that's me. I deserve a good man. But they never looked at the fact that maybe I'm not a good woman. Maybe I have not developed good woman uh, traits, wife, wife uh, traits. Same thing for husbands. I mean, this ain't just for the women, but y'all know I talk to the ladies quite a bit. Because I just crazy enough to believe that women rock and our feminine energy is what causes things to change. I can walk in a room with 30 testosterone filled men going back and forth having an argument or debate and I can guarantee you when I walk in that room in my feminine energy and my feminine essence it settles the room so I just I always talk to the ladies because I believe you know straight men follow women and if women up the standard and know what they carry then a man that wants to be with them will conform and become the guy that he was created to be so I'm just crazy enough to believe that so Back to what I was saying about fear. You look at it and when you're looking at statistics and when, you look, when you're looking at television and when you're looking at the fact that we do not have a lot of television shows that show successful relationships, successful marriages, but we have the girl go get your stuff and go get your education and make sure you got your stuff together. But so... We suppress in the very thing that we want because what we're being programmed with, right? So it could be relationships. It could be uh, your fear of starting a business because you'll see a lot of people that's not being successful, but yet you're not looking at the more successful people that are out there that are making it happen. So what you're watching, what you're putting in, what you're reading is keeping you in a state of fear. Um, I have, I had a dialogue with my, my Caucasian friends and I have quite a few of them and, um, my family is, uh, a very mixed family, right? So we were having a conversation and I said, you know, uh, well, one of my, one of my, um, counterpart, white counterparts, we were talking and they were saying something to me about, you know, we were, the news or something came on and it, it was showing a couple African-American men that had done some things wrong and, you know, made some bad choices, right? And they were saying, see, see, this is what I'm talking about. And I said, so I said, well, let me stop you right there. I said, you see these guys and what they did absolutely was wrong, right? But when was the last time or have you ever had that kind of run in with the African-American male? And they had to really think about it. And the answer was no. I said, so you're fearful and being afraid of black men based upon what you're being sold on through the media, right? Now, don't get me wrong. You know, some of, some of y'all need to act right. But then there's a whole lot that are acting right that we just don't get to see. So my, my um, the person I was talking to, she said, you, you know what? You helped me look at things a little bit differently. I said, because we're not aware of why we are fearful. We just know that we are fearful, fearful of relationships, fearful of each other, um, fearful of success, you know, fearful of failure. We just scared of everything. And it has to do with what we are putting in here, because I always tell you guys, this is the motherboard. This is your, your command center. Whatever you put in it is how you are respond. So even though, you know, I got folks that saying, you know what? I know I, I'm more than this and I'm more than that. And I got, God got me. You can't even believe in the concept of God and who God is if you do not have this right here together. Okay. So let's stop being so spiritually deep 
Um, and we think we got it together because if you were, if your bank account ain't what it needs to be, that's because you're afraid. You're afraid to step out and use your gift. You are, you're afraid of redesigning your life. You're afraid because if you redesign your life, it causes you to get out of self and get out of your own way if you choose to do that. So if you're not in the place that you want to be in life, no matter where it is, it has everything to do with your fear level. So yes, you got God and I, I, some of you, you know, you guys are right, but you got to trust God first. You can't even trust God if you don't even have the faith level to understand what trusting God actually means. So let, like I said, let's not be so spiritually deep to where we don't look at what's really going on because we are doing what we are taught. Your fear comes from what you have been taught. Everything that you do. Is from what you've been taught, but we have not questioned. Why am I fearful? Why am I afraid? Why am I afraid of having a lifelong loving relationship? Why am I afraid? Like I said, Michelle, put God first. What does that mean? Most people can't put God first because they have no concept and understanding of even who God is. And they don't have another faith level to even understand what, how to even take what that even term means and apply it to their life. So we're just operating and once again saying what we're supposed to say. That's why we have churches filled full of people that will never be or live to the, to the utmost powerful level that they can because they're just saying stuff put God first it's your season it's your time trust God all of those things but what does that mean what does that look like most people can't tell you what having the authority uh, over um of everything in my life what that means we just say stuff so ask yourself if I was really trusting God the way that I spew it out of my mouth, if I was really believing in God like I just say, right, why is my life in shambles? Why am I stuck? Why am I fearful? Why am I broke? Why am I always in a perpetual state of loneliness? Why? Thank you guys for sharing. If you don't mind, hit the share button. Thank you guys. Ask yourself this. So all of that other stuff, the cliches that we say, they are just a distraction and an excuse for us not to dive deeper in to figure out the why. Y'all like my cup? It says, don't talk to me. It's coffee time, but I'm actually drinking tea. And I got my little, oh, I forgot to take my little thing with jiggle off. My little spoon. So, once again, the fear that you have of everything, because if you were fearful of nothing, you would have everything you wanted. Or at least on the road to getting it. But most people can't get on the road to even getting it <laughs> because of the fear, because of the programming. So we like to say these wonderful cliches. We like to say these wonderful affirmations, but we never activate them. It's the activation that people have a problem with. It's the execution. See, saying things sound great, but I can say I'm wealthy every day, all day. But if I don't know how to activate my gift, my talent, to activate me going to go get the wealth, I'm just saying something. I'm just saying something. So the number one reason why you are fearful, it has everything to do of what you're putting in. Like I said, I, I use relationships as an example because it's the perfect example because we see on television, divorce, 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 divorce. 
uh, not enough men, not enough men, not enough men. The women are materialistic, materialistic, materialistic. You know, men, women have unrealistic expectations. You know, that's all we see, right? So although our soul, our very being, is yearning to have a successful relationship, we will put up this wall, this defense mechanism, based upon what we are hearing and what we are seeing. But at the same time, you got to remember, you're saying to yourself, that ain't me. I ain't that woman. I'm not, I don't believe that. Yes, you freaking do. Because the reason why you won't step out and say, you know what? I'm going to put on my dress and my heels and get myself all cute and everything like that. And I'm going to go out. I'm going to take myself out. And I'm going to go out where the men actually are. And I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to smile, and I'm going to have a great attitude. And I'm going to go with the expectation that I may meet someone, whether it's for a romantic reason, or maybe I might connect with someone that can help me in another area. And who knows, he or she may know somebody that say, and they say, I got somebody I want to introduce you to. But we won't do that because we're so fearful that it's a possibility that the very thing that I want is actually available to me. You have to choose what you're putting in because what you're putting in will come out whether you're aware of it or not. Like I said, for those of you who say, I trust God, put God first, are you really doing that? Because if you did, your life would reflect that. Results don't lie. I have to look at the majority of the messages that I get on this page. Majority with uh, the messages are people having issues with relationships, um, forgiveness, and finances. But these are the same people that say, I trust God. If you trusted God the way you say, the way it's easy to just come off the, you know, off your tongue just oh I trust God glory ain't he good all of that right if that's what you believe you wouldn't need anybody to tell you that job there's no such thing as job security so get your behind up and go start a business you wouldn't be fearful of starting a business because you wouldn't be fearful of failing because you understand that everything that you need is already inside you already know that. And once you make the decision, I always talk to you guys about making uh, solid decisions. When you make solid decisions and you get laser targeted, laser focused on what it is that you want and you do it on a continual basis, you'll see things start to change. But most of you don't do that. I know I was guilty of it until I became aware. I hope you guys did your homework. If you didn't do your homework, um, go watch two videos below this. I think uh, right now we're at like 170,000 views. Thank you guys so much um, for that. But watch your homework. Program your phone. Did you actually program your phone? And how many times has your phone gone off since I talked to you on Saturday? You got to make it something that you do on a regular basis. So that's why you're fearful, darlings. It's because of what you're watching. It's because of what the media is telling you and it's getting into your subconscious mind. So although you say, I want this, you're not getting it because your subconscious mind is on overdrive, keeping you from it. If you don't how to know how to put in the work, the first thing you must do is make a solid decision. To say, you know what, I want to do better. And once you make the decision to say, I want to do better, you'll start seeing things come to you. But you got to stay active on it. You can't just say it one time and then go on about your business. You can't, that ain't how it work. That ain't how it work. You have to do it on a continual basis. It's called repetition. It's called being aware being aware and so many people are, are walking zombies they cute walking zombies honey hair did nails did everything did but they are walking zombies so are you going to continue to be fearful 
If the answer is no, that means you need to change your programming, which means number one, you need to change what you're putting in. You and then also believe that um, in abundance versus lack. A lot of women, um, like I said, I stick on relationships sometimes because that's what I get a lot of uh, questions about. If you believe that there's a lack of men, then there will be a lack in your life. For my business folks, if you believe that there's a lack of people that may want your service, then there will be. Whatever you think it'll be is exactly what it'll be. It's really that simple. So I never try to talk people out of what they want to believe. I share information. My goal is not to change you. My goal is to inspire you to change. But whatever you believe it'll be, please understand April Mason is not going to try to talk you out of that. Because if you're dead set on that, it means your programming, you're not willing to change your programming. All you got to do is pick up that remote, pick up that, pick up that remote and choose to change the way that you think. Okay. Choose what you watch. Everybody want to be a wife, but you watching the housewife shows and they're not wives. Well, girl, it's for entertainment purposes. No, it's programming you. It's giving you false expectations. It doesn't work like that. You have to make the decision to say, I want something different. And do the work to get something different. I told y'all I, I gained like 15 pounds um, after my surgery. And my doctor was like, oh, yeah, it's customary for women to gain up about 25 pounds the first year, you know, after they big girl surgery. And I said, well, why y'all didn't tell me that? So I had to decide, okay, April, you know what? Your pants is not fitting tight and you had to go get a size 10 the other day. And all your pants in your closet is a size 6. Do I complain about it? No. I get up and I did my 30 minutes of uh, cardio this morning and I'm going to do some more this evening. I'm making the decision to be healthy. I'm making that decision. Because health, wealth without health is, is nothing. Well, monetary wealth. But wealth actually is, I mean, health is actually is wealth. And I look at it, health like this. When you buy a Mercedes, it takes a certain kind of fuel, right? It takes a certain kind of gas. But if you keep putting regular inside of the car that requires Supreme, eventually that car is going to break down. Would you say, Denise, where do we find the homework? You got to go back and watch my old video. Uh, watch the video from Christmas Eve, from Saturday. You got to go watch it and watch it all the way through in order to get to home the homework. So... Like I said, if you put in the wrong gas in the bins, the bins not going to break down right away, but eventually it will. So you have to change the fuel that you're putting in. And there's so many people that have passed away based upon things that they could have changed health wise by just putting in better fuel. And it's the same thing with your mind. Put in better fuel so you can get better mileage. Okay. Put in better fuel so you can get longevity. And that starts with the way that you think, okay? Look at what you're thinking. Look at what you're eating. What you eat affects your thinking. I, I had to learn that because um, if I notice if I ate more plant-based foods, not heavy, heavy foods, I can work all day. However, if I stop in the middle of the day and go get me a burger, because I like burgers. Or eat a piece of pizza, something like that. I just like, Ooh. and I'm like, oh y'all, I'll be back. I got to go take a nap, <laughs> and I didn't get to be productive. So what you're eating affects what how you feel. It affects your thinking, and it also affects your productivity. A lot of you ask, April, how do I become more more productive to getting stuff done in my day? Look at what you're eating as well. It plays a part. Do you travel and do conferences? I sure do. I sure do. If you want to like to book me, you can always do that by going to aprilmason.com and click on the booking request. Um, last year, I didn't do much touring uh, as much as I could have because I was kind of just chilling out. But this year, 2017, I'm hitting the road and, and I'm coming to a city near you and, and I'll be having webinars and, and teleconference calls and, and just events and just having a really good old time helping people to redesign their life 
by helping them to redesign the way that they think. So look at all of that. It's all connected, people. What you're watching on TV is connected to how you feel. What you listen to on the radio is connected to your mood. Now, and, and here's one right here. You know when you put on that little Osley Brothers Between the Sheets, a little bit of that Aura, Aura Kelly, 12 Play. You put on some of that, uh, who was that? Who do I like? You put on some of uh, that Music Soul Child or some of that Earth, Wind & Fire, certain songs, some of that Joe, some of that Carl Thomas, some of that... Um, Eric Roberson and all of that, right? Depending on what song you choose, it will change your mood. So that's why when it's time to be grown up, they'll say, let's set the mood. And they'll put on some music that will set the mood. And then all of a sudden you start feeling all warm and fuzzy. And you're like, oh, killer boy, you better stop. All of that, right? It's because of what you just put in. You, ju you just altered and set the mood, set the tone for the evening or for the day, depending on how you how you get down. You just set the mood by the music that you chose to put in. Because I know I, there's certain things I can't listen to. I'll be like, I'm going to need y'all to turn them Isleys on off, okay? Them, them Isleys need to go on here and go bye-bye. <laughs> it's the same thing. What you put in affects everything. I know some of y'all a little spiritually deep. Uh-uh, that's why I only listen to, you know, Kirk Franklin and Stomp. Stop it. When you're trying to set the mood with your husband, you're not listening to no, uh, take me to the king. You, you might call him king, but you ain't about to listen to no, take me to the king, and we fall down, but we get up. If you do, no power to you, because I wouldn't. <laughs> You're going to throw on some of that Joe, honey. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So it's the same thing. If Whatever you put in is what will alter your mood and what you're thinking. It's that simple. So once again, the number one reason why you are fearful, it has everything to do with programming. And a lot of our programming comes from the television it comes from radio, it comes from magazines, it comes from anywhere that we spend majority of our time, what we put in, what we put in, is where it comes from. Would you say Luther, mm, Luther don't do it for me, but Freddie Jackson, no. That's another story. I like me some Freddie. I know some of y'all, my one of my relationships almost ended when I said I take Freddie over uh, Luther. They were like, what? I'm, girl, we're going to have to break up because what you mean? I'm like, yeah. hey, we like what we like. We like what we like. All you need to know is you just need what's, you know, what song does it for me. That's all you need to know. So if it ain't Luther, you might want to turn that off, okay? So what you put in is what will come out. So look at where you spend the most time, what you think about the most. What do you, are you always on entertainment blogs trying to get the tea? I'm just saying. Are you always trying to uh, watch reality television and, and you, you know, you have a desire to be in a relationship, but you never watch anything that's successful relationship based? Ask that. I have about maybe 20 audiobooks in my phone from relationships to business to spirituality. That's what I put in. And that's what I give you guys based upon what I put in. So ask yourself today, what fuel are you going to put in your life on a daily basis? Because, you know, we, get, we, we go get gas pretty often in a week. So if you're giving your car what it needs, the reg regular or the supreme or whatever it is, if you're giving your car what it needs to function efficiently and successfully to get you from point A to point B, you got to ask yourself, what type of fuel am I putting in myself? Hmm? 
What are, what are you going to put in? If your car is important enough to you to put in the right fuel, why aren't you important enough to you to put in the right fuel? Time out 2017 is not about being a punk. No more punks. Ain't, we ain't going to be no punks. Punks don't live here no more. I just say, you've abandoned me. Punks don't live here anymore. <laughs> you wanted to abandon you. You, you. you want it. Yeah. Ain't no punks. You're fearful because of what you put in. There's no need to be fearful. You're fearful behind because of what you've been taught. Like I told the story the other day about my granddaughter. When, the, when someone hit the light post and all of the lights went out in the neighborhood, she immediately said, sweetie, I'm scared. And I said, um, why, Leah, are you scared? She said, because it's dark. I said, why does dark mean scared? And I told her, we're not scared. We're getting ready to go play in the jungle. And I turned my, my, my um, flashlight on my phone. And we had a great little, about maybe hour and a half in the dark, pretending we were in the jungle and that we were going to go find treasures and we were hunting for um, animals that we can take and we could save. So now for her, because I started working on her programming, she doesn't look at darkness as being scared. But now if I would have gotten scared, she would have continued to be scared as well too. That's why we are fearful of the things that we're afraid of. Nine times out of 10, it has everything to do with what we are taught. I heard a story about a lady. She was going, her and her husband were having issues and it was all stemmed from the ham, the Christmas ham. And she would cut the butt off of the ham. And the husband would say, why are you cutting the butt off of the ham? Well, because that's just what we do. That's what we do. So they, they, I mean, like they arguing back and forth and having marital issues because of this ham, right? So they finally go to marriage counseling and the marriage counselor says, why do you cut the butt off the ham? And she said, because my mama did it. So we just cut the butt off the ham. Then she found out from her mother. She asked mama, why do you cut the butt off the ham? Mama says, oh, honey, that's because our oven wasn't big enough for the complete ham. So this woman was getting ready to wreck her marriage because she was doing something she, that she was taught and she had no idea why. How many things are you doing that you were programmed to do, but you have no reason or understanding of why you do it? And I'll tell you this, when you start asking those questions and you start getting those answers of the why, it's going to shake your very foundation because your foundation was made on everything that you were taught. Ask yourself, why do I trust in God or why do I believe in God? Now I do. Now I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not saying you shouldn't. I just want you to go in deeper because when the the more you go in deeper of why um, your spirituality is what you say it is, then you'll uncover a lot of times, well, I don't know anything else. All I know was God. All I know was taught was Jesus. Now, why was, why? Why do I believe in what I believe in? So when you understand the why, you can activate properly um, your 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 reasonings, you know, to where you can see them manifest in your life. So ask yourself, why do I believe in God? Why do I believe in Jesus? Why do I believe that, uh, you know, I have to go to work for someone every day and work till I'm 65 and get a check? And you know what? I was I was doing some research on where Social Security came from, and uh, I'll I'll break that down. And Social Security came from somebody that wanted to do something. It wasn't even the United States took it from a whole entire different country of why we have Social Security and you get a check at 65. It ain't got nothing to do with what you think. So you have to ask yourself. Um, why you believe the things that you do. Why do you get up and go to church every week? Is it because you were you were born doing that? Do you have a, a, a religion or do you have a relationship? Why? And I had to get rid of religion and hit the reset button on my mind because of my programming. I never had a relationship with God. 
I had religion in what they said I'm supposed to do. Now, when you ask yourself these questions and you come up with an empty answer, it's going to shake everything in you and it's going to want to make you search for truth. But you have to be willing to not be fearful of getting deprogrammed. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is when you start finding truth, it's going to battle within everything that you've been indoctrinated with from birth. It's going to be a battle. I, I battle all the time, y'all, because some things just wasn't making no sense. And I had to put them in the proper context, but I couldn't put them in the proper context unless I had the correct information. Change your programming. Stop being a punk. Stop being fearful. And stop watching freaking so much TV. Kill the news. Y'all watching, oh, the stocks is plummeting. That ain't got nothing to do with me. But people who operate from what they hear and what they see, they'll go out and try to, to work a job and get, I gotta go get the best job slaving for someone else. But at the same time, their family on the other hand is suffering. But I made me some, some coins, as they say. So change your reprogramming, darlings, and it will change everything. Make sure you do your homework. If you do not know what I'm talking about, so you got to go watch the video. And make sure you join me on um, YouTube because I'll be going live over there doing some master class trainings. It's under April Mason TV. Go over there. We have I, I'm changing up my YouTube channel. It's been April Mason TV for a long time, but um, now the theme is re Redesign Your Life TV. So we put up the new banners and everything, and I'll be going live over there. So make sure you go over there and um, subscribe. But I just want to say thank you for your audio disc, 10 Keys to Being an Asset is great. Oh, thank you so much, Toya. If you don't have that, you can go to aprilmason.com and get that. It's my Are You an Asset? 10 Keys to Being a Woman Who Brings More to the Table Than Her Appetite. Ladies, like I said earlier in this video, we control everything. Meaning, not in a, not in a bad way. I mean from how things work because it's that feminine energy, that softness that can go in and break down that masculine energy. I look at the story of Samson and Delilah. The government called her in to go get the strongest man to ever live. It's a reason for that. He was a masculine man. They did not send a masculine woman in to go get Samson. You can't be a masculine woman trying to attract a masculine man. Now, do we all have masculine and feminine traits? Absolutely. But don't let your masculine trait be more dominant than your feminine. So if you don't have my audio book, I do talk about that. Um, and uh, I think it's a great audio book, if I, may not, if I may say so myself. So just go to aprilmason.com, click on store. My website is under construction. I know some of you said, I was trying to send you a voicemail on your send a voicemail message. It's not working. I know it's not working. We just put that up last night. So uh, we're working on the back end with the new homepage. But some of the components that we're adding are going to the live page and they're not um, activated yet. So uh, we do know it's not working, but if you want to uh, send an email or want a booking, just click the contact form and you go there. If you would like some one-on-one -on -one time, you can book that as well too. So I wanted to share that message with you this morning. I got to go and get on my way and get my work done because I'm, I'm preparing for a uh, teleconference slash webinar. I'm decide, trying to decide, do I want to do it over the phone or do I want to do it live a webinar. I don't really like the slide thing because that's impersonal to me. So I may do a webinar about, it's called about redefining your life now. I may do it live face to face because it make me feel connected to you or I might do it over the phone because I might need you to sit on your couch and lay down and just listen to what I'm saying without any distractions. But when you're watching them slides, you reading the words and all, I really don't like that. I know it works for a lot of people, um, but I'm more, a little bit more personal um, than that. So I'm trying to, we're deciding today um, which direction I want to go in for the free webinar that I'll be doing. So love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Change your programming. Do your homework. Get yourself together. Um, and like my post below that said, um, while, you, while you're waiting on everything to be perfect in your life, flawed, perfectly flawed people like myself 
are moving forward. Doesn't matter what your flaws are. Doesn't matter what you look like. Doesn't matter what you have, what you don't have. None of that. Just get up and make a decision to go be great. Okay? And don't deny your greatness. All right? Love y'all. Have a great day.